The job of all governments is to prioritize how they spend money on improving the lives of their citizens. And it's not always an easy job. There are many competing interests and agendas that governments need to consider. However, there's a principle that can help guide their decision making. How do we achieve the most effective outcomes in communities most in need of support? This concept is called allocative efficiency, and it's a very useful approach for helping ensure that government resources are allocated in the most efficient and effective way. It's an important concept when it comes to Asia's HIV epidemic and how HIV programs are funded in the region. The communities most affected by HIV in Asia, the key populations, are men who have sex with men, transgender people, sex workers, and people who use drugs. These key populations are set to account for well over half of the 300,000 new HIV transmissions, which researchers predict will occur annually in Asia by 2020. However, right across Asia, government spending on HIV programs targeting key populations is nowhere near in proportion to the impact that HIV is having on these communities. For example, in the Philippines, key populations account for almost 95% of new HIV transmissions, but only 18% of HIV funding is spent on programs for these communities. And all of it comes from international donors. In Indonesia, 23% of new HIV transmissions are among men who have sex with men, but only 0.05% of Indonesia's total domestic HIV spending is allocated to this group. The trend is similar in Malaysia and Thailand, with low investments in HIV programs for communities most affected by HIV in both countries. When it comes to allocative efficiency, these investments don't measure up because they don't create the most effective outcomes in the communities most in need. So who's funding the gap? Well, right now, international donors account for 85% of spending on HIV programs for key populations across Asia. However, as some countries in Asia become richer due to economic development, international donors are withdrawing their support on the basis that these governments now have the capacity to fund HIV programs themselves. But the danger is that these governments, for a range of complex reasons, might not step up and provide the support that key populations need. The challenge for local HIV advocates is how to focus their governments on bridging the gap. To have this conversation, it's vital that HIV advocates increase their understanding of how governments across the region are investing in HIV and other health programs. They can then combine this knowledge with advocacy to help persuade governments to direct resources to where they're most needed. If we want to reach the goal of ending HIV transmission in Asia by 2030, then HIV advocates and governments need to work together to find ways to sustain HIV prevention programs for key populations. It's time to shift the focus. And it's time to shift the conversation.